This is the Night Wolf howling at you, and today we're going to dive into the Well of Secrets so we can land into the world of the Legends of Dragon Noir and look at the Dark Magic Apprentice Oscurl, Evil Magician figure. Although if this is the Dark Magic Apprentice version, shouldn't it say Evil Apprentice Magician? I'm just saying. This is also the first time we get to see a younger version of one of the characters in figure form. Although it is still just a repaint of the previous versions of him. It also doesn't look like they do any real reuse of parts either. I mean, I should say, it doesn't look like they're using any other parts except for his original set. If we turn it around, we get the nice little informational blurb on him. Dark Magic Apprentice Oscuro, Evil Magician, Homeworld. Eddie Mayan. Special ability. Magic possession. I don't know if that was listed as a special ability in the previous uh, information blurb from the Wave 1 figure. But that does make sense based on the mini comic. There will be a link uh, in this video at the end. So if you, to my review of it. The weapon of choice. The chaos staff. There are many stories surrounding Oscuro's past. Very few still remember him as a wanderer and trader of magical secrets, artifacts, and spells moving from town to town. Eventually, Oscuro dealt with the most corrupt and dangerous individuals, proving his value to tyrants and ruthless politicians. He gathered wealth and influence as time went on and hid his true origins from friends and foes alike. Kind of surprising to hear he had friends. During that time, he had already developed most of his powers. But he was able to conceal his magical harness and staff interdimensionally, recalling them on occasion when he needed them. Many believe he is of noble origin and his high education took a dark turn when he started to pursue magic and occultism. His unscrupulous rise to power has only helped his reputation as an evil warlord who is willing to use any means necessary to get his way. As part of this wave, we of course have the Glacier Mission Barbero, the Pro Prophecy Vision Yandara, the Fire Fury Karem, of course our Dark Magician Apprentice Oscuro, the Night Hunter Pantera, and the twin brother of the evil Onitor, Raytor. So let's go ahead and open this sucker up, shall we? So, we got the heavy duty plastic casing that comes with the Legends of Dragon R figures. And, once more, we have the nice little sculpted piece to hold him in place rather than using the annoying little plastic tabbies or rubber bands that so many other companies use. And we can just pop him out. He comes with his cape and his staff of chaos. This time the staff and the harness are done in a clear green plastic and rubbery green plastic, I guess. I think his cape may be the exact same one used with the Ice Glacier Barbero. Okay. There is a very slight color difference in them. I don't know if it's being picked up in the camera or not. But the Oscuro cape is just a little bit darker than Barbero's cape.
In the case of our buddy Oscar here, we will pop the head off, lean that forward, toss the cape over his shoulders, put the harness back in place, and then pop the head back on as well. That way you got the cape sitting underneath the harness The uh, plastic bag got partially welded to the uh, plastic when it was uh, attached to the card. We get our nice little informational blurb here on our figure. Showing the different parts that pop off of him, his staff, his harness. Uh, this little bit that I always forget about where it just says, Hear the call from Yond." Actually, let's do that like this. Hear the call from Yandara. Each Legends of Dragonor figure is modular and can be separated at certain joints. Parts can be mixed and matched with the other figures in the line. These are the only swappable parts. Do not force any other pieces apart. We've got the Legends of Dragonor mini comic, The Fire at Icemere which I have done a review on in a separate video because it is like um, 16 pages long. And uh, even I don't think I could do this six times, trying to come up with slightly different variations on what to say, like I do with the Motu ones, especially since it's basically twice as big. It also does have our um, cross cell on the back as well, showing the Barbero... Yandara, Karem, uh, Oscuro, Raytor, and Pantera figures. Uh, I think all of them are so far have been really nice. I do like this toy line. I'm still kind of curious as to how they're going to fit on the dragons that are coming up, but we'll find out when uh, the first dragon Ignitor comes out. I think it's supposed to come out at, towards the end of the year, but I don't remember for sure. But yeah, check out the the uh, mini comic review I did with the uh, first wave unbox or the the unboxing of this wave to just show the different figures that came in it. And I am hoping that by the time I get through all the figures, I will have a nice video with a dramatic read of this comic with some other people to do the voices for the different characters. But that leaves us back to our buddy Oscuro here. Uh, articulation wise, his head spins around because it's a peg that can pop off. His arm can spin around. Well, the nice thing with this cloth cape, it doesn't really interfere very much. Uh, unless you get the staff stuck on it. But it can pop off as well. And of course, speaking of the arm here, the wrist section or the forearm also spins around and can pop off. We have a spin at the waist. Uh, one thing to note is that the paint does kind of stick enough that it can seal the, the joints up a bit, so you might get that kind of popping noise. Huh. Coincidentally. Um, but you can still pop them off, and sometimes they're just a little stiff. You can kick up only that little amount and can kick back that little amount as well. And if you try to uh, do a side kick, the leg will pop off because that's one of the parts that come off. However, if you want, for whatever reason, you decide you want his leg and his arm, you can do that. And if you want, you can put his hand, his arm on his leg. Or his hip. That is the power of the modular parts in these figures. You can also pull the boot off. You can stick the boot there. You can stick his arm here. Actually, that joint, there we go. For a moment there, I didn't want to catch. But you get the point, right? You can get kind of wild with these figures if you want. That's what's kind of cool about them. Um, he's got the, the face sculpt here new. 
Um, it is a, the exact same face sculpt as our previous ones, just painted with the younger look. Um, apparently he's an evil ginger. I don't know if that was, <laughs> I don't know if that was on purpose or if that's just a coincidence. I do kind of think though that maybe what they should have considered with his younger form that perhaps he shouldn't have had the facial damage and the blinded eye. So we maybe, you know, we could have had a story somewhere along the lines as to how that happened. His staff is done in this uh, kind of solid or green plastic. Um, the top is actually a very soft, but uh, actually the main part of the staff is pretty sturdy and will probably break if you bend it too much. The top of it feels more like a rubbery kind of uh, material. Mm, possibly the same as his harness, but maybe not. The harness does have the paint job there. I'm not a big fan, though, of the clear harness, if I'm being perfectly honest, or the semi-transparent harness. I just don't think it looks all that good. I'm not... I just don't think it fits as well with with the story. Like, why does the apprentice version of him have... Is this supposed to be like his power hasn't quite solidified? Because when we compare him to his original Wave 1 figure... You know, he's got the heavy-duty harness. I mean, they are the same figure. They use all the same parts. Um, it's just that the harness is that green. There is more detail, though, to his uh, his upper body than there is on the original figure. As you can see, they actually painted in the uh, collar and the strings on that one, whereupon this is just in that black plastic that it was molded in. Also to note, they did not go with the higher quality version of the cape. Um, and you know what? I might have this cape on backwards for all. No, wait. Yeah, maybe. I might have this cape on backwards, honestly, but I think it looks better with the furry part on the inside when you have them standing forward but the original version they actually have a backing on the cape seamed together so it's definitely a higher quality version of the cape every cape that they've released since the first wave has just been a straight cut out including of course our convention exclusive version what's kind of interesting and maybe this is the reason why they picked the green The comic exclusive green is pretty much the same as the staff and the harness. So it's, I guess that's probably not a coincidence, right? In fact, if you get right down to it, a lot of this feels a bit inverted coloring on the two. But if we wanted, just for the heck of it. You can switch out the, uh, the equipment on them. Actually, the, the, the transparent green uh, equipment does look better with the transparent green version of the figure. Shoot. And I will say, I think the uh, purple version of the equipment looks better with that one. So if you did get the three pack convention version, uh, switching out the equipment from the wave point one, the wave one point five, actually might not be a bad way to go for the look for display purposes. Just saying. Anyway, uh, I think these are pretty nicely done figures. I do wish they would have uh, given us the my, more higher quality cape that we got with. The original one having uh giving us the backing so we could have the fur forward or back if we wanted but other than that well other than that and you know like i said 
I think it would have been kind of nice if they had given us a new head with this figure in order to have not have the scars on there. So maybe in his youth, uh, while he was still the apprentice magician, he hadn't been uh, injured yet. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't like this review, uh, feel free to send it to somebody you hate to torture them. I am not that picky. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace and love.